Hello, it's me again, and today I've brought you something very special because I've bought myself a car to flip. It's a bit of a trend, you know, 2021, we're coming out of lockdown. The, the market started opening up just a little bit now that there's a trend of people buying cheap cars to flip for profits, of course. And of course, me being me, I will catch on that trend to show you guys exactly the inside of this business. And of course, I think I've bought myself something semi-decent that I cannot wait to show you guys. And what I'm going to do right now in this semi-empty semi, semi empty car park somewhere, I wouldn't say it's Reading, uh, that I'm going to put my GoPro on and reveal it to you. Okay, in three, two, you guys ready? In... And there you go. It's a 2012 VW High Up. I think it registered in July 2012. Right, let's go. Let's have a look on the inside. And of course, glossy finishes and gorgeous three door layout. What do you think, guys? This is indeed what you're looking at right now the cheapest VW up on sale in the country. And I bought it. And guess how much I paid for it? Just under 1500 quid. Just because I can. I'm YC, welcome to Chicken Cultured, and this is going to be episode one of my epic car flipping challenge. It is indeed a 2012 high up with the glossy finishes and 65k miles on the clock. A very, very low mileage car indeed. For this age, nine years old, it's only been a commuter car, just sort of like nipping in and out of a shop or your local waitress, because apparently. The guy, the previous owner, is a very posh guy living in somewhere outside of Oxford. And he only goes to school and some other places, I don't know, country clubs, in this. Well, on the inside, I think it's a pretty good car. It's very sound, structurally sound. When I was looking at the car, there are quite a few pieces that are missing already. First of all, this being a high up, there should have been a um, satin F there. But that's going to cost me, I've looked it up as well, around uh, £170 to replace. So we're going to try, try and find something cheaper. And if you guys got a part, let me know. And of course, standard feature, you got this glossy finishes. I really love it. It's very youthful. And I feel like this could be a perfect uni student car. So if any students out there, you're looking for a car, let me know. Hit me up. We can sort something out. I'm sure we can do that. And of course, it's a three-seater. Um, you have to move your seat backwards forwards like that. And I've actually had two six foot plus, guy, plus guys sitting in the back the other day. They actually said that is, it is indeed sufficient room in the back. It, well, even, even leg rooms as well, so that's good. And uh, of course, quite a few things missing. That's one of them. Right, and right to the back, you got this really nice glass tailgate. And uh, Courtesy of the guy, he gave me some um, trackies. I think he left it in there, but who cares? It's free anyway. So, full size spare wheel, which is good. Ooh, learn to play as well. Don't need that anymore, do I? Fuck that. Not bothered. Right, it has not been crashed. However, this is the big problem that I'm very concerned about. It is indeed a car that has been, uh, has been in an accident before. It is a category D car, so you got all these uh, scratches like it's not structural okay so nothing major and this is the bit here where i am thinking about whether I how i should fix it really apparently i've contacted a local body work uh, but body work body shop that um they could pull these out so you got one two three four five five dents for a slightly higher budget than I was expecting when I bought this car. But I think there is still a good amount of money to make off this car. There's still a profit margin in there, if you're brave enough. Speaking about the left on the car, 
there is this bit where I was looking. I was actually don't don't ever buy a car without checking the uh, the history of it. I'd actually pay someone to look up the uh, MOT history for me, and apparently the left rear tire is on its way out. You can see the cracks and stuff like that. That's not good. It's just that this bit here it means that it is on its way out, and I have to find a rear left tire to replace but the alloys are good just need deep clean really this car is disgusting the reason why we got this this massive dent on the left is because this posh guy decided to take it for a drift uh, on a deserted field somewhere he somehow managed to side swipe the um the fence and there you go it is what it is. Typically, these cars would go for like somewhere between, the, when it's a Cat D, this is a Category D car, only cosmetic and minor damages, not structural. The going price would be somewhere in the region of 2.3K to 2.7K, depending on mileage and indeed uh, the condition of the car in the year. And I was looking as well. Apparently, there's a salvage car, uh, only for parts, of course. It is currently on sale for 1.9K, and I bought this for £1,475. So, I mean, what more do you want? A complete car that passed its MOT two weeks ago when I bought it, and the fact that it still runs, it breaks well, and keeps me mates happy, keeps me happy, and it's pretty involving the drive as well. And let me show you, because now we are going on the road. Right, now that we are on the road, of course, I think I've made the right choice. This car is mechanically sound, I must say. Like, I'm now driving, driving on the canvas, of course, but I'm on my way out. Slightly, somewhere slightly more uh, exotic, of course. Actually, no, left, no, going left here. When I say exotic, it's more speedy, shall I say. Let's go on the motorway, shall we? I mean, this car, right? Let me give you a little bit of uh, information about the... Um, mechanical side of things. It's a one litre, three cylinder, NA engine. So normally aspirated, if you're not a car guy or a car girl, it means that um, it hasn't got a turbo. Let's put it this way. 75 brake horsepower is plentiful, especially if a car just under a ton. So like 920. And yeah, and 0 to 60, I think 12.8 seconds. That's not bad to be fair. And the fact that it's insurance free means that it's a lot easier for you to insure as a young driver. I mean, this is a category D car, so it's been crashed before and it's been reported um, and written off. But still, it is around 1600, 1600 quid if you're a new driver. That is not bad at all. So it's basically identical to like, you know, what it was. To be fair so you know insurance is not an issue if you're a new driver looking for for your first car and this car is so easy to drive <laughs> 1500 quid you could, you could have gone for so many other options you know but the up the reason why I've gone for the up is because not only, I know you guys are going to say that, elephant in the room, I'm going to mention it now, that actually, Car Throttle did a video on a red one, five door, not that long ago with um, with the guy from Top Gear. Here's a disclaimer, I didn't copy him at all. I just saw this car, I always like the, uh, the up because there's always something quirky about it and this being the most memeable car, one of the most memeable cars ever, I would say it's worth it, if anything. You know, Jeremy Clarkson took this very car, in fact, with the same rims and the same colours. He drove across, across Ukraine and into Chernobyl. And he ran out of petrol there and decided to present, you know, the show with two dicks. I'm like, well, that, that it goes to show something, right? This car is magical. It's on When I first bought this car, I thought I was like, it might, I might have bought a lemon, you know. I then used the OBD meter to check what's going on under the bonnet. But I'm so glad that it pays off. It's actually a decent car. It's a decently sized, powerful car in a sense. I just look at it. I mean, 
it's 50 right now and I'm still accelerating. I'm in fifth gear as well. Foot hard down to the floor, it pulls. I have tried going on a motorway, right? It's got a lot to give, I must say, performance wise. And it's really stable. That's one, two complaints actually. Two complaints on a motorway. Number one, it doesn't have a, a cruise control, a speed limiter. It means that it's all about that panic movement on your throttle really because you have to be constantly sticking to 60 or 70 if you're on a motorway. It is quite tricky sometimes when you're driving and you're a new driver and you have this sort of like, you know, heavily weighted right foot like myself. It's hard and also you need a sixth gear just to make it more economical. It's quieter, you know. I mean, I can still have a conversation with you. It's just not as comfortable, if anything. But still, it's not that bad. Right, so that's it for the video. Ooh, forgot my uh, little handlebar, so I'm literally doing it freehand. If you've enjoyed this video, please let me know down in a comment. Tell me the stuff that I can improve on. And of course, stay tuned for more videos on Cheeky and Cultured. I mean, I'm trying to use this channel as a, uh, as a platform to bring everyone of different, of all backgrounds who love cars and travel and culture, of course, together into one unified community. And that's what I'm trying to do. And yes, I'm third culture king myself. You know, it's always been interesting for me to sort of like meet different people, especially if you like cars, I rate you automatically a 10 out of 10. And of course, speak soon and subscribe and like and share with your friends. This is the end of my video. Let me know and see you on the next one.